All right, welcome to Artist Talk on Bob's Radio. My name is Rio Raymond, and I'm the company of uh, a new artist who's joined us and signed up with Bob's Radio, Rebecca, all the way from Denmark. Thank you so much for being a part of this, and thank you for uh, signing up with us. You're welcome. Nice to meet, be here. I mean, I mean, I'd like to discover a lot more in terms of your artistic caliber and a lot of the things that you do. Uh, what I've been hearing is that uh, you started off your music career in Denmark, right? And then now you become quite prominent across Europe and India, which is what we're going to be talking a lot about. But what were your early years of inspiration in terms of music? Um, my inspiration? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, yes, it started in Berlin. I used to live in Berlin, so I went to all the underground clubs okay. and listened to electronic music. And then I picked up beats and tried to make it my own uh, style. And uh, actually, I started making uh, electronic music, but found out that I was more like a pop girl. Okay. So I love all genres of uh, of music. Yeah. Yeah. And but Berlin how it started more... that was in Berlin. And Berlin is and, known uh, for a lot of dance music, electronic dance music as well. Exactly. And then I was uh, very lucky to be on a trip to Mumbai f for the conference all about music and. Um, I got some really good connections there. So I'm trying to make different collaborations with uh, Indian musicians, Bombay Viking, if you know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, I mean, we've uh, he's grown up listening to Bombay Vikings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and some other musicians. So it's been really a, a good year, actually. Lovely. I mean, it's absolute pleasure to know, you know, when a musician says that they're actually finding it right uh you know see things go in the right direction and a lot of opportunities coming by and i'm even glad that you're going to be doing something with bombay vikings someone who we grew up watching or listening to music as well uh but let's start with your early inspiration you said berlin uh is where underground places you heard of music but if you could mention a certain artist who you've been a fan of and got inspired who would that be Oh, it, it would be like all sorts of different artists, but especially Whitney Houston, uh, yeah. Prince, George Michael, Michael Jackson. I grew up with these icons. So they have been my, my great inspirations, I would say. Those names, I must say, they actually resonate with a lot of not just musicians. But, you know, when you talk about it, we just drive back 30 years ago to the kind of music that they gave us and did timeless and when you mention these names, it definitely is nostalgia for a lot of people. Now, as an yeah. artist, you also are managing your own label, right? Yeah. Uh, how has independence music shaped your career? Well, it it started out well. I I got some some deals from around from some some uh, minor labels, uh, work with independent artists, but um, the contracts were not were not really good for for me actually okay. so so i i decided to make my own label and just do things myself oh lovely so yeah. that is why it also says that you're very entrepreneurial and business minded yeah you you have to be because you know the music business is so like wow. different and difficult to figure out how everything works so so you have to like make your way through it's a jungle out there i think Totally. I mean, it, and also when you go on to the online platform, which we'll discuss to uh, discuss about as well, uh, which is a huge amount of clutter and to find your music and your craft out there. It's again, another, you know, battle altogether. But let's ask you in terms of when you started, like, say, I'm going to become a musician and you said, OK, I'm going to write these songs. How did you go about, OK, and decide, OK, I'm going to do this as a career? Um, well, it, it started when I lived in, in Berlin and then it just grew, you know, then I started making two songs, recorded some songs and then I just like, uh, kept going and yeah, it was not that I wanted to be it right now. It was more like a process, um, because you all, you also have to have stuff to write about. You have to feel inspired and, uh, Yeah have something interesting to say and have the right melody and and yeah and find the i i had uh, some troubles finding the right producer but now i i managed to find a really really good one. Oh wow nice i was ac actually thinking that you actually produce your own music but i'm sure uh when you mentioned now is when I, okay you do have a producer who does the music because that is the most yeah. crucial part of a song is because you can yeah. record with whatever talent you have but you need to get the right produce, uh, producer to mix and master your song. And that yeah. actually shows in the kind of music you already given us. And I'm sure it'll be showing in the music that you're going to bring out as well. 
Yes, exactly. That's very important. Yeah, that's now, the most important. If you listen to your songs, like you said, you're inspired by Whitney Houston, you're inspired by Michael Jackson as well. Uh, would you call your songs love ballads or would you call your songs just romantic numbers with the modern day beat elements that are included in it? I think they are, they are, they are like, yeah, pop ballads. Um, yeah, a little bit maybe electro pop. Um, just bored and still what we do uh more electronic vice but uh, yeah definitely just pop music did uh, you think of anyone before penning the lyrics of the song was it a dedication to somebody or was it just about you felt something and just wrote uh that's a good question well i i have been inspired of people i've met in my life definitely um ex-boyfriends and people I met yeah throughout my life but also just a certain feeling or a certain vibe a certain mood um yeah that's the thing about uh, life right like when you talk about love you tend to get an experience to write a song and get sort of a mood based on that as well and I think a lot of musicians do this too on that note let me ask you what does love mean to you um, love means like to have someone on your side. Uh, actually, I wrote a song. I haven't released it yet. It is called "I'll Be on Your Side," and it's it's inspired by my uh, boyfriend, my current boyfriend. Uh, so I actually wrote a song for him. <laughs> what a lucky guy! I'll be on your side, and I'm looking forward to that song as well. And from a little bit of the fun side, let's get to something a little serious in terms of the music and the business side of it. Uh, you are an independent artist and I kind of conquer with, you know, how difficult it is to put your music out there to be found, to monetize as well. But before I dive deeper into that side of it, do you have something like a side hustle that you do or you're the full time musician? I, I also I have a, a part time job where I teach. Um, so, yeah, I, I teach on the side. Not music, uh, film and media and French. Wow. So, Wait, yeah. you're a Danish girl who grew up in Germany and now teaching French. Teaching in French. Yeah, I, I also, I, 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 I took a semester in France when I was younger. You sound I like, I know, I know it's very European to say the kind of languages you speak, but you're very much like where I come from, Bangalore, where here we speak a minimum of four languages. Each person who belongs to this city. So... You're, I could say you're one of us. You're like a Bob in, in, in the European sense. Yeah, maybe that's that could be. And actually, I went to I went to Mumbai with a, a Swedish delegation, some some Swedish musicians and Swedish uh, label managers. And then there I met someone from uh, Warner Music and okay. I actually uh, helped him um or he, uh, some of his artists, a, a duo actually, to write something in, in French. Because oh. they, they 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 wanted the some lyrics to be in French, so it can also be on, yeah, helping others. You're, you're so. quite a talent, I must say. Multilingual writing lyrics in the French. Uh, I can't wait to see what else you can bring to the table. But now diving a little deeper into the whole subject, the business side of it. Uh, how easy or difficult is it for an independent artist to be found on streaming platforms? Oh, I think it's very very difficult. Um. Yeah, and that's actually something um, I'm I'm trying to be better at to with the marketing and PR. Um, it it went really well when I was in India. I got a lot of contacts and uh, yeah, and I could see my my numbers uh, getting higher. But it, it's it's difficult to maintain the uh, the interest. Uh, I think mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm sort of I'm collaborating with different um, minor PR agencies and stuff like that. Well, that's one side to it. And also another side to this sort of a business is uh, you can. Do you think a current day musician, especially an independent artist, can survive just being a musician or they need to try and have another side hustle from anywhere across the world? I'm asking you. Um, I think it, it you can manage, uh, of course, but you have to have like gigs, you have to perform, uh, so you have to, to be out there in the field. It's not enough to just have your music on the platforms. Uh, I've learned that. So and the most gigs I've had has actually been in, in Berlin because I know some of the 
uh, the club owners and managers. And so it was like sort of that way I got into it. And yeah. I love performing in Berlin because there's a certain vibe and uh, people are very, uh, they come up to you after and ask, oh, who's your producer? And I love the song. And, and I actually also wrote a song called Berlin, about Berlin. <laughs> so I'm very, uh, very inspired by the, the city and yeah, love having my gigs there actually. I hope one day you come go from B to B, from Berlin to Bangalore to perform someday. Uh, we hope for that to happen. Uh, but again, yeah. like one more thing I want to ask you was in terms of the business side of it, like even streaming side of it. Uh, a lot of artists put music out to get their music out to a larger audience and try and monetize over it. Have you been able to monetize with your music? And if not, or if you have, what do you suggest artists start needing to do uh, in terms to monetize on the music? Like to, to uh, get your music heard? To get your music heard and also to make money out of your music. Um, you, you certainly have to be uh, active on social media. And uh, also like do the ads on Instagram. Uh, Facebook uh, has uh, helped me very much. Also just to get in contact with people from around the world. And um, I made an ad. Um, in Instagram, I think, and uh, I got in contact with this musician from actually from from um, what's called Kolkata in, okay. in India, and uh, we started to make a collaboration as well. And uh, we are working on some songs in both Hindi and English. And he was the reason I actually got with the music uh, delegation to to right. Mumbai with the Swedish delegation. So. Yeah. Well, so yeah. definitely bring the uh, yeah, make some ads on on social media. Be active. Make videos. Content is the way forward. Right. I think. One second, sorry. Well, I completely understand about being on social media and marketing your content of sorts. I'm not going to deny that. But also with this comes a lot of people face is uh, a little bit of a burnout because of being on social media. Yeah. Right. Uh, do you feel that because you have to constantly keep posting? Uh, yeah, I, I take breaks from it. Yeah. Um, now I, I've been working in the studio for the last couple of months and I have three new songs coming out and then I have a gig in November and I'm working on that. So I haven't been so active in social media currently, but I tend to, to be more active, of course, uh, up till and till a release uh, to to be more out there. But is it like a burnout when you get on social media? Keep posting and be in tune. Um, or I think you, like you should be aware of it. Yeah. I wouldn't call it a burnout, but it's it's important to take breaks from it. I think. Right. And then, uh, yeah. Then do some ads and and yeah and just have fun with it. It's it's all about just it's all about the music and and uh, yeah and. Is social media the only marketing tool that can be used to promote your music? No, you can also. I've also uh, collaborated with a a PR agency um, in Berlin actually. But of course, it, as an independent artist, it's it's expensive because you have to 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 um, to pay for it yourself uh, and also you know you have to have a producer you have to pay him and uh, the transportation hotels for your gigs um, right. so yeah it, it, it is uh, I would suggest that you start on social media and and do the ads and I actually had a reel who went very well in India I got I think it got almost 400,000 views um, oh nice that's that's a yeah. good number actually very good number uh this is yeah, on, got... uh, one of the apps streaming platforms or is it on youtube is on um no it was the real on instagram a real oh. okay yeah so that is what also something that brings me to talk about how when you mention you are inspired by like the likes of whitney houston and michael jackson and then today you're making music right you do electronic pop music and at the same time you have to push your content out on instagram but Instagram has made the audience to look at music in a different sense than just how music has been perceived or consumed in the last couple of decades ago. Sorry, uh, mm -hmm. consumed the last uh, 
I mean, before Instagram came into play in terms of reels. So let me ask you as an artist, do you end up putting or making music based on what the algorithm or the Instagram need is? Or you make music based on how you find it interesting? Definitely the last one. I think that's more sustainable uh, in the long run. Um, because, yeah, I have to be inspired. I have to put some emotions in it. Um, but of course, uh, I was asked to do a, by T-Series in, in India. I was asked to do a song in, in both Hindi and English. And since I don't uh, speak Hindi, I'm <laughs> I have to uh, make a collaboration with an Indian artist. So yeah, I got a request, so I, I'm working on that. But but I'm not like doing something for others or for the algorithm. I'm I'm doing it for mostly my myself and what I find interesting and and I like. Right, and as a, and Instagram is a marketing tool as well for social media for you to push your music out. It do you think somewhere as an artist that that it could be better in terms of how people have to promote a music because most times it's like tick, 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 like you know very catchy beats that catch someone's attention than the actual lyrics that someone sings in a song at least in the last couple of uh, years of the reels do you think that is the case or do you think no anything sells in social media yeah i think i would definitely go with the um, chorus uh, for the real like it it has to be catchy within the first five seconds it has to uh, catch people's ear because otherwise they just scroll so, so yeah definitely now i asked you something else but you also gave me an answer to uh what you say to kind of be a little contradicting to what you said earlier which was about how you make music for your liking but when you write a chorus it has to be catchy of course a chorus yeah. is like the heart of a song uh, but then you're writing a chorus here. Are you saying you're writing the chorus to make it catchy for Instagram or to some for someone to just sing along wherever they are? I'm, I wait. I I liked uh, I like songs that have has a that have a strong hook a, a hook line a top liner. Um, I like like catchy music. Uh, I like all genres, but definitely, um, sometimes when I make a pop music, I want the chorus to be really really good and. Uh, Occasionally, I also start with the chorus. Okay. Fair enough. Um, my next three songs, two of them are very upbeat, and then there is one pop ballad. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I make different uh, sorts. We're looking forward to it. We can't wait to get it on air and play it out to people as well. Uh, now, we've spoken about the Instagram side of it. We also want to understand Rebecca uh, from a business point of view and your thoughts on India, firstly. Uh, the kind of what kind of a market it is because we know a lot of YouTubers are coming into India uh, a lot of collaborations of musicians are happening with Indian musicians here so you did come down for the musical expo that happened in Bombay when you look at music, independent artists across the world and you see India uh, what is your thoughts? Uh, to be honest I didn't know much about the Indian music industry before going to Mumbai um, uh. with some other Scandinavians but I found it really really interesting uh, to see how the business is uh, out there, um, but I also think it's a it's a difficult market to to enter because um, many people still only listen to to Hindi music or Punjab. Uh, but what I uh, heard was that they are more into they are becoming more into English pop music or mu pop music in English or even a mix of Hindi and in and English could be uh, and then it's also very um, dominated by Bollywood films yes, the yes. Bollywood industry I've heard and we also went to to see the the studios the Bollywood studios in Mumbai um, yeah and we have we had the meetings with T-Series Spotify mm -hmm. Sangagama and Ghana and I think they was the, the, the guy the, the, the yeah the guy at Saragama told us that it, it it is mostly dominated by Hindi music still. Right. Like if you, I mean, just to give you a little more insight into that, like as a larger conjecture of whole of India, if you look at it, yes, uh, Bollywood music does have a larger selling point. Uh, and when you told that, you know, we're moving into sort of an in, uh, English pop uh, music sorts, um, I can speak for Bangalore especially because there has always been... Bangalore and I think even go into a large part to quite a large part of India as well. 
uh, we've been listening to music from the West from back in the day. Like there are a lot mm-hmm. of people who go back to listen to music from say the 70s or even 60s music uh, to even like your old time start the vinyl player music that used to have back in the day. Uh, like we're still fans of bands like Firehouse. Metal was big here back in the day. Uh, Journey, Bon Jovi. And then over the time, the 90s were amazing. We grew up on like the Britney Spears, the boy band era. So all of that we've grown. Only now, I think the West is seeing India as a market because of our numbers, I think. And also in terms yeah. of, uh, I'm proud to say this as well, because we are, in terms of accent and language, we are far better than many of people who listen to music and consume content for the rest of the world. Do you think mm-hmm. similar to my thoughts as well? Yeah, I, I think you're, you're right. I think there, and it's it's very, I, I've heard you have like, how many languages, how many? Uh, uh, there's no, I mean, there's no number that I can think of right away because there's at least no. a languages that we speak but with different heard it was like 20 or something more than 20 we have about 26 and, states with languages but yeah. then what happens is in most of our states the dialect changes for each language and mm-hmm. some states have like say five to six languages in Karnataka alone we have uh Kannada, Konkani, Tullu, Korava and uh, of course Bangalore is a mix of all of it and then you have the North Karnataka the dialect changes so I'm guessing every state has this sort of a thing where the dialect changes as you move from uh, as you move geographically up and above the whole state yeah yeah so we're very confusing when you go into dialects so we'll not go into that (laughs) (laughs) no it's uh, I find it very interesting and yeah uh, it was my first time to India so I really enjoyed it and I was pretty overwhelmed by your traffic and all the people, <laughs> and but uh, I found that they are very very friendly in in India and helpful. So lovely. And you also mentioned about how uh, you know your music has transcended from uh, European markets to Indian markets as well, and the kind of collaborations you're going to be having. But what we'll do now is we of course going to look forward to your songs, but we want to get into some rapid fire questions, like quick questions for you, and uh, let's see how you do. Good for it. Okay. Okay. Your first ever song you wrote? It was a song called Carousel. It was called? Carousel. Carousel. Okay. Carousel. Possibly yeah. give us a little gist of it if you could sing. Um, oh, it's it's been many years, but... Uh, no it's problem. It's like a carousel. It's a freak show. I'm going crazy here. I'm going crazy here. Yeah. <laughs> Is that enough? <laughs> that's good. That's good. This has been a long time. Uh, also, I was a little bit depressed at the time when I wrote it, so it's not. <laughs> the lyrics are not so if uplifting. <laughs> okay, let's let's not take you back in time of sorrow. So let's no. go get into the questions. All right, your dream collaboration. Oh, my dream collaboration. Oh, boom, boom. That would be with. Um, oh, like a, 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 a musician or producer or anyone. 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 Oh. Um, that would be with Paul Kalkwana, a German DJ. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I know the answer, but I'm still going to ask you your favorite city. I'm guessing that's the answer, but yes, your favorite city to perform in. Berlin, definitely. Knew that was coming. All right. It could uh, be LA as well, but I haven't <laughs> tried it yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, your most played song on your playlist right now. I think it's called uh, One More Time. Uh, one instrument you wish you could play? Oh, that would be the piano. Oh, lovely. And uh, your favorite lyric you've written? Uh, my favorite? Um, I think it was uh, a part in the song called Berlin. Okay. Okay, here it is. Gabby. Back to you. Yeah, that was just a snap of it. A song you wish you had written. Oh, a song I wished I had written. Uh... Wow, there are lots of songs. Um, if I should name one peculiar, that would be um, 
Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, one advice you've received, the best advice you've received being a musician? Um, actually, expect I, I got a, an advice from a very famous uh, producer, actually, and he, he told me, expect to be disappointed. Oh, okay. Because you will be disappointed along the way, but and but so so you you if you expect it, um, in forehand then you you won't be disappointed if if yeah that's a great and then you you will be you will be extra excited if you get something uh, yeah and that's it happened for me I, I decided for to, okay well. i yeah <laughs> if rebecca had to choose one artist to bring back from the dead who would it be hmm i think it would be whitney houston oh yeah I think and so. one final question that I want to ask you is, I know I asked you about your city. I asked you about your collaboration. Let's say you are given $1 million to create your own concert and choose your own venue. And you also could choose one artist to headline, I mean, to, uh, to start the show off for you. And you are the headlining act. Where mm -hmm. would you choose the location and who is this artist going to be? I think maybe the location would be either New York, uh, Madison Square Garden, or Mercedes-Benz Arena in Berlin. Um, <laughs> yeah, two uh, good uh, stages. And oh, who would I want to perform with? I'm I'm sort of like really. Uh, who would be the into... starting act? Maybe Paul Kalkbrenner. The, the German DJ, I'm really much into his uh, electronic music at the moment, but it, it sort of changes, you know. Uh -huh. um, otherwise, it could be, uh, I don't know, um, Taylor Swift. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Taylor Swift, I mean, that, that's a big dream. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but uh, Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> no, it was a dream, a dream. Eh? dream yeah, it's a dream. So you, I'm, that's why I'm saying you, you should no, never. I'm just. I'm no, just uh, right. Who knows you dream just... Taylor Swift and you get Miley Cyrus to be a starting act. <laughs> I'm just telling who I'm inspired by, but definitely Paul Kalkpana or yeah. Or right, Le, 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 or or there's a there's a there's an English, I think she's British. She's Chris, she has her, her her artist name is Leroux. Okay. It's also pretty good. She made nice. the song Bulletproof. All right. So one final question is what are your thoughts on something like Bob's radio and what we do? I think it's a very, very good um, uh, thing to do to help like promoting independent artists and uh, and uh, yeah, try to to make your own radio bigger, but also maybe discover new uh, artists. You never know who's becoming the next big artist. So it could be one of you have right now uh, in your- uh, Maybe one I'm talking to right now. Yeah, on, your, on your social media. Um, so, and, and yeah, so I think you were working very professional with it and that's the way through. Uh, and when you mentioned about someone becoming big, I hope uh, one I'm talking to actually becomes big in terms of music and uh, artistry. That is you. Me? You said, uh, as you know, we uh, look for artists and you never know when they grow big. So I'm hoping no, no. I'm talking to becomes big. That is you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that. And uh, we're looking forward to get your music on board and uh, the latest one. We'll do a chat up every time you build, bring out a new song and trying to build on this ecosystem one artist at a time. So thank you so much for being on board. Thank you so much for coming in to chat with us. But there's one thing you've not done till now. It sent us an artist endo. I know I will. I've been actually I've been really, really, really stressed uh, with so many things going on. And it's in my calendar. I keep pushing it. <laughs> but it's uh, it's coming your way. I haven't forgotten it. I definitely. We look yes. forward to it. And we look forward yeah. to you growing big as well. And I hope when you grow big, you don't forget us and still send us your music. Of course, I will. Thank you very much. And how many one last question for me. How many people do live in uh, Bangalore? Bangalore, we are about uh, 13 crores. That's about 13 million. 13 million is wow. Yeah, 13, 13. million. No, 113 million. Is that 13 crores? Man, this English to yeah, we're about 13 crores. So I'm guessing that should be 1 million is 10 lakhs. So that's uh 
13 million yeah wow no. amazing 130 million that's the count sorry yeah it's a huge market so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah indeed is a huge market but most of our audience is outside of uh, india right now because of the fact that mm -hmm. uh, we're internet radio and our numbers are only growing. Like yesterday, we touched about 42,000 listeners yesterday. We've always been on 40, uh, between 38, 35 to 40. But yesterday, we hit about 42,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's only building, Amazing. build on to it and see how this goes. But once again, thank you. Absolute pleasure, Rebecca, ch chatting with you. Thank you, Rayo. Thank you for having me. Uh, looking forward to talk to you again. Likewise, likewise. Sure. All the best and uh, have a good night. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye.